YouTube. Christopher. I finally got a bad one. <clears throat> so I'm sad to report. This guitar is a dud. It's a Coloss. It's a GT6. It's a really sick looking guitar. It's a very cool looking guitar. <laughs> it's design is pretty amazing. It's 100% wood free. It's made out of aluminum and carbon fiber. So this neck is carbon fiber with an aluminum cap on the headstock. It's got locking tuners that have 19 to 1 ratio on them. Uh, it's got the really cool perloid looking uh, tuning pegs on there. It's got the uh, Coloss badge that's you know placed in the neck, which is pretty cool. The neck shape is amazing. Uh, it's really small and thin and very fast. Um, it has no fretboard inlays. It does have side dot inlays that are made out of brass, which is pretty neat. They're not perfect, uh, especially that 12th fret one. Not perfect at all, actually. <laughs> um, but it's pretty awesome. The fret work is pretty good. Uh, you can see, I want to say it's the 22nd and 21st fret of what I am assuming some ex extraordinary repair work done to it and you can see glue on the fretboard so it's uh it's got some issues now the most major issue that it has is this the nut slots are cut so wide That makes me sad. It needs an entire new nut. Now, if I could zoom this in properly, which I can't, you would see that there is a crazy amount, maybe you can see it, there's a crazy amount of glue right there. You can see the reflection of it holding that nut into <laughs> a carbon fiber neck. So for me to get that nut out, wow, I should phrase that different. For me to remove that nut, <laughs> uh, it would take an extraordinary effort because that thing is glued like crazy. Here is the major issue. This is like maybe the biggest design flaw I've ever seen. So it's a cool bridge, right? The strings all go in here, and these fine tuners are just, you could use this, this bridge on a headless guitar. If you loosen them, the string comes forward, you can take the string out, put a new string in, tighten it up, and it'll, it'll tune it up to pitch. Now the problem is that there isn't an angle coming from the saddle to the ball. I mean, there is, it's slight, but watch what happens if you move the whammy bar down. Ready? Boink! All the strings suddenly jump off the saddles. So if you think those strings are gonna fall back onto those saddles where they're supposed to be, I don't think so. <laughs> so that is a major design flaw on that bridge. Now, I tightened the springs in the back to try to alleviate some of that. So you can use it, but if you want to bomb, bah, right there, they come off the saddles and it's just terrible. Uh, active pickups, it's got a battery port in the back. Right, up, right over here. Here's another design flaw. Right here. Look at how far that sticks out. I have a gigantic belly. That thing pokes me the whole time I'm holding this. 
It'd be one thing if the jack was angled well and it kind of came out at a different angle, but that thing comes out at an aggressive angle. So this cable is just smashing you in the belly or in the junk, depending on where you hold your guitar. Um, yeah. I get hair in my mouth. That's a fun video now, isn't it? So, another thing, this is minor, but you can see there's a finish flaw there. There's a gross smudge in the white right along the edge there. You know, if I'm being nitpicky. Uh, the other thing that was needed to be done is there are only two screws that hold this neck, and they were fairly loose. Uh, I had to tighten those down quite a bit when I got the guitar. There was no battery in the guitar, which was uh, interesting, but that might have been because they shipped from China, so to have a battery in there, it might have uh, might have got held up at customs or something. I don't know how batteries are for shipping overseas, so that may have been why, which isn't a huge thing. Um, it's a battery. So I have played maybe 10 notes through the amp. <laughs> with this guitar and what I heard was okay. It sounded pretty good in the heavy channel. I haven't heard the cleans at all. So here's the heavy sound. <laughs> shame that this guitar is so messed up because it actually sounds pretty good. That's the bridge pickup. Here's the neck pickup. There's both pickups. set it's kind of a down only right now just to give that angle a little bit better over the saddle because when it was at the optimum playing height which is the bridge flat uh, across the body you got some buzzing on the saddles so you kind of have to peg the bridge back in order for these things to ring out otherwise you don't have enough brake angle off the saddle and it, it won't play correctly so there's those sounds there's a switch here that I think does some sort of splitting action. Yeah. That's both. That's the neck. And then the bridge. And then a regular. The knobs, by the way, if you look in the back, are little itty bitty pots and they are pretty stiff uh, to turn these knobs. They don't feel scratchy. They, they move rather smoothly, but they're tough to turn. Let's hear these pickups through a clean sound, see if they sound at all good. Let's see here. Oh. Clean channel. I'm going to give us a little volume because I'm actually turned down a little bit here. Cause... <laughs> Okay, that doesn't sound promising. All right, so here's clean on the bridge. Yeah, that's an A right there. Uh, that's the bridge pickup.
position. <laughs> in the split. I wouldn't give this guitar to somebody who was an enemy. It's uh, pretty bad. Uh, public service announcement is what we're going to consider this video to be. Buyer beware if you're looking at the Colas guitars and you're thinking, oh my god, they're cool looking. The technology is pretty cool, which it is. Um, they have some major design flaws. That bridge being a, a big no-no. Um, one of the things that I thought I might be able to try uh, to alleviate that problem would be to lower the bridge and raise the saddles but there's a little lock screw on the end of this uh, bridge saddle bridge piece here with the tail piece that locks that saddle in place and when you unlock it uh, you can actually remove the saddle and look and the lock hits the very bottom of that saddle so if you raise this up any further than it is the lock is gonna miss the saddle and it's going to instead hit the screw, which when you push the, the lock against the screw, it's going to dent the threads, which will make it so that you can't back it back out again. Those threads will get stuck, and you'll end up damaging the saddle. So you can't fix it that way. And thankfully, I looked before I tried. Um, otherwise, I would have damaged it, and I wouldn't have been able to return it, which I absolutely am. Uh, I messaged the eBay seller, not eBay, the uh, Reverb seller that I bought it from. Um, and they immediately said, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll take it back as a return. Uh, and they wanted some pictures so that they can send it to Colos. The other thing that I will mention is that uh, there was a little bit of deception uh, from the seller on Reverb. Uh, they claim to be out of Texas. Uh, I'm not going to give the name of the seller. It's literally the only one on Reverb that sells Colos guitars. Uh, and they claim to be out of Texas, but they are not out of Texas at all. Uh, this guitar shipped from China. It says it ships from Texas. It does not. Uh, it ships from China. It took over a month to get here. Um, I would not recommend that you buy one of these. Uh, the, the initial guitar that I bought, or tried to buy, I should say, didn't have these pickups in it. It had open coil pickups. It looked cooler. I'm not a huge fan of these uh, plastic soap bar style pickups. I think they're kind of ugly. I like coils. If not coils, I'd like, you know, to have the metal covered where you can see the six screws across the top. Uh, just a preference of mine. But this is not the guitar that I bought. So when I bought it, the... Uh, the seller immediately contacted me and said, hey, you know, we found finish flaws uh, in the guitar that we wanted to send you, so if you don't mind, I'd like to just send you one that's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Instead. And I said, okay, that's good. I'd much rather a perfect guitar. And uh, this is far from perfect. So, I'm probably starting to sound like a whiny little girl right now. Uh... Not to offend any whiny little girls out there. You guys are fine. Um, 
but yeah, this, not for me. So it's going back by everywhere. Public service announcement for YouTube. Um, Colas Guitars, buyer beware. Um, unplayable, as is. And I, I can't imagine that a different model is going to be any different. This bridge is the same on all their guitars, and I, I don't see this as a viable bridge. That, that design is just not okay. Uh, so, Coloss, if you see this video, I apologize for sh 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 pooping all over your guitar. But uh, you guys got some work to do. Uh, I won't be buying another one. So, sadly, this is my only, only my second guitar review on my channel that has poop in it. Uh, so, sorry about that. I wanted this to be an awesome guitar and be like, guys, this is the future, man. We don't have to burn trees down and take these things to... I don't know where I was going with that. But no wood, right? It's green. I'm rambling. This is the end of the video. I'm going to shut up before I sound even dumber. But here you go. Coloss Guitars. Cool design. Bad bridge. Bad nut. Bad experience for this guy. It's going back. See you guys in the next video. Peace!